So decided to test out a new from the store rub so I can show actually a, a general process for dry rubbed smoked wings. And I've used the Red Hot, uh, Frank's Red Hot original before. It's good. It's actually good on things like even rice, french fries, you name it. Um, not terribly hot. I would say that the Owens hot wing spice is definitely much more robust, much more piquant. Uh, but this is, you know, it's kind of like Frank's Red Hot Sauce in a powdered form. Um, the reason for a dry rub is because I actually do prefer it. it. It's one less step, and I think it responds really well to a smoke flavor. That way, that I'm not a big fan of, of having wings drowned in sauce, but just saw this as well. Um, Frank's Red Hot Stinging Honey Garlic. And it tastes interesting. It's actually got a, an interesting mix in here. Apparently, it's got some soy sauce powder. It's got garlic, of course. Um... It's it says has some some molasses, so it can again that brown sugar feel. Not super spicy, a little bit of back and heat, but the flavor in it is. I think it could be interesting, and I thought about trying this on maybe just some chicken thighs or whatever else. But you know, wings are a go-to, and especially with it, you know, even though uh, there's no real <laughs> no real NFL or anything else right now going on, um, who doesn't love a good wing, especially on a weekend? So I've already taken the liberty of doing a full family group of wings layered here in this bus tub. And I've got it with a little bit of Lowry season salt, but the, uh, the rub on both sides. And now I'm gonna actually prep this for the, uh, for the new st stinging honey garlic. So breaking down wings, you know, sometimes I actually do leave the wing tips on. I'm one of those people who, uh, you know, if I, especially if I go out for wings, uh, Hooters, for example, I miss it in the days when they actually used to do that. And part of it is just, again, it, it's one more thing to gnaw on. Um, I do keep the wing tips when I do break them down all the way for use in stocks. But as far as cooking in the smoker, one of the big reasons I do remove these about 50% of the time is they do have a tendency to burn, especially if there's any sugar in the rub. So my logic would be that, you know, kind of an Occam, Occam's razor standpoint, simplest answer is usually the right answer. Uh, is it worth the flavor to have that that bit of singeing that that burnt? Uh, depends on who I'm feeding. And so since I'm going to be sharing these wings tomorrow with somebody, I figure it is a nice thing to do to give them not only something that is attractive to eat, but also that has, you know, just from start to finish, just a, a nice flavor. So we'll see if these rubs do it. Typically I make my own, and I probably will make another wing video in the future where I use one of my, maybe my ancho brown sugar rub or some of the other things that I typically like to do. But for the store-bought rubs, this is a nice test of a new product, which that's kind of what this will be, but also to demonstrate the process as I said before. So let's get these things seasoned up. Okay, so just to keep things moving along, I've actually uh, gone ahead and lightly seasoned these things with a little bit of lorries, very lightly, because there is already salt in this rub. Um, it's I've already seasoned the, the flip side of things as well. Um, it is a very loose rub, and you can see on here, again, the way they market it, again, this is pretty much a mild rub. Um, the Red Hot itself, I still wouldn't consider to be terribly hot, but it is enough to at least, you know, if you're sensitive to that kind of stuff, break a sweat while you're eating. So... Now it's just a matter of seasoning, and, it, and again, it's a very loose rub, almost like uh, that, you know, that, that true garlic powder as opposed to granulated garlic. Um, I'm laying it on reasonably heavy just because I want it to be able to soak in a little bit overnight. This is going to run for about 14 hours in the refrigerator. Um, I'm not going to be doing any sauces to these. I'm not going to be doing any basting. I'm not using the bacon, baking soda, or I'm sorry, baking powder trick to crisp these things up. This, the method I use on my pellet smoker, on my blazing gridiron, is typically sufficient to get a nice crisp skin, even in the absence of, let's say, a high sugar content in the rub or uh, the baking powder or rubbing them with olive oil. So again, these things, um, they are rinsed before I actually cut them. You can see again that I'm, I do want to get a little bit more in some of these, um, giving a healthy coating. It is, like I said, when it's cakey, I actually tried patting them a little bit and found that my fingers gummed up very quickly. I tried it with both a glove and uh, bare hand and I found that it, it did, it got so thick and cakey that it wasn't actually adhering to it. It was adhering to my hand and, and not these. So I figured that's good for now. Um, my, my frustrate, the only frustration I have with it so far 
is that because it's so loose, you shake too hard and actually, uh, it feels like the entire thing is going to come out. I don't really think there's a problem with this. Again, I'll give these a good shake tomorrow before they actually go in the smoker. So the basic plan will be to let these run again overnight in the refrigerator. I am going to use some industrial uh, shrink wrap to cover the top of it so it can actually again be in a, in a decent environment. The salt in there should act as a little bit of a dry brine. Sometimes I do a wet brine on these things. Uh, you know, I make my own typically and I do love the flavor of it, but for wings, Four to six hours is really all you need. And these things I, I think should be plenty juicy based on the method that we're gonna be using tomorrow. So they'll go into the smoker at a low temperature for a bit. Uh, typically I use a 175 run for 45 to 50 minutes. Let them get a good smoke flavor, rotate the wings, and then go up to typically 350, 375, depending on how quickly I want them to cook. Uh, tomorrow, again, that 350 to 375 range will be about 45 additional minutes. It'll be by look as much as it is by touch in terms of the skin. And that's it. Again, it can't get much more simple than this, but the process is replicable no matter what style you use, whether you want to sauce them, whether you want to actually shellac them, you know, baste them while they're, while they're smoking and let the sauce tack up a bit, really is up to you. Now, some people do prefer the smoked than fried method. To me, it's an added step. And frankly, why bust out a deep fryer if you don't have to? So I've had good luck with this. I love the flavor profile. We will see if this makes it into a rotation. Nine times out of ten, I use my own rubs, but this, I saw this on the shelf and I couldn't really resist. And it's got a, a, a very interesting aroma. So we will pick this back up tomorrow and see where it leads us. So it's time to get the wings on the smoker. These have had an overnight ride. And I do think I'm going to add just a wee bit more seasoning. Again, I, I have no idea how strong this flavoring is, but I don't think it can hurt. These, of course, are those uh, stinging honey garlic seasoning blend from Frank's Red Hot. And I'll probably do the same thing with the traditional hot wings flavor on the bottom. This may be a horrible mistake adding more seasoning, but such is the price of science, I suppose. Um, you know, I, in terms of whether or not these things will turn out, that's... This is about as basic as you can get for a wing cook. There's no baking powder, as I mentioned before. There's no breading of any sort. There's no brine. Uh, nor did I crisp these things up with oil. I, I want to see how the flavor stands up after, again, relatively speaking, a brief kind of mini dry brine. Now, these are looking a little bit more robust, but that's also the color of uh, the seasoning. A little wet. That's the only concern. There was no drippage from one to the other but I do want to do just a wee touch of seasoning while the smoke gets started on these. It could be that there's a difference in salt content from one of these rubs to the other. Um, again, I'll know more about that once this is actually on the smoker, out of the smoker, into my belly. Um, but we shall see. So I've got somebody coming over to hang out and eat some wings today, get some work done. We're going to do a podcast a little bit later, but, uh, Again, two different flavors of wings. I think this will be a fun experiment. So that's gonna be it. What I will do is again, I'm gonna be running these at 175 um, and let these go for approximately 45 minutes. What I'm gonna do after that is rotate the wings, bump the temperature up to 350. And at that point, I'll probably rotate them one more time at maybe the 25 minute mark and make sure that there's even heating. Um, from front to back, again, I do have the, the, uh, the redesigned sear kit in place. It, does provide a little bit more upflow both in front and back. There's a, a bigger gap uh, compared to the, re the regular drip pan. Um, I have noticed a little bit of singeing on the very back row as a result of this. So I've tried to directly center it and see if I can control that through a rotation. I still have my old drip pan. Um, that thing was, was damn near bulletproof when it came to wings. I don't mind this. It's a little bit more labor intensive, but it's a lot easier than swapping out drip pans. And I really do like the new design. It's, it's heavy as hell. So Blazon did a great job in terms of that redesign. So again, let these go. Obviously two very different styles of wings. And uh, hopefully I can give you a recommendation on whether or not the stinging honey garlic, well, and, and, you know, again, for that matter, the original Frank's Red Hot seasoning blend, if these are worth your time. So we'll be back in maybe about 45 minutes. Okay, so it should be time 
to rotate the rings. They've been picking up smoke at 175 for just over 45 minutes, like 46, 47. Um, you know, these are hot. If you do the insulated glove trick, it's a little bit easier. Typically I wear both, but it's kind of hard to control an iPhone at the same time. So we'll put these here for now. We'll rotate the rings, wings completely. And get these in for another 45 minutes once I bump the temperature. So in terms of trying to block out the sun for you guys, um, the color on these things is good. Skin is actually starting to tighten up already. These are very pale wings. I almost wish I'd put some cracked pepper over the top of the honey, uh, the honey and garlic wings, but again, if they taste good, I, it's while you eat with your eyes first, we'll see how it tastes. So again, once we revisit these, you'll see that the skin will be crisping up quite nicely. There's not a huge amount of sugar in these rubs, but the 350 temperature does, in my opinion, more than enough to, uh, to do what we need. So back in 45. All right, picking back up with the final part of the cook. I have rotated them once at the midway mark, did it about 45 to 50 minutes. So roughly 25 minute mark is when I came in. And I think that even though the sun is probably kind of skewing this, you'll be able to see them once they're inside under better light. Uh, they look great. So we will get these things separated. Probably could have used a bit more seasoning on some of the parts where maybe some of these inadvertently touched. The look and again, the aroma of these, and the crisp skin, that's that's what you can do even without the the benefit of baking powder is that again you're going to see that this is a nice tight crisp skin the wings are now a finished product we've got the honey garlic over here and the regular frank's red hot over on this side um, again in terms of skin being crisp you can hear hopefully that uh, they are nice and crisp so we'll see how things go let's try the drums first this is the hot Super juicy. Um, as far as the look for it, you know, you're not going to get really a smoke ring, obviously, on on wings. Flavor is is really good. Not hot though. Which, based on my past experience with the Frank's Red Hot Powder, I kind of anticipated. I do want to put just a couple of drops of Crystal Hot Sauce on the flat and see what that does. Nice flavor. Could maybe do with a bit more salt, but not bad. Let's see here. All right. With the crystal hot sauce. Mm. Honestly, the Frank's Red Hot Powder would probably be best tossed with maybe their Frank's Red Hot. They've got a pre-made wing sauce for making it yourself with butter and Frank's Red Hot. I'm a crystal guy. Just a couple drops in there. Really amps up and brightens the flavors. Not bad. And I've used it before. But always with the sauce preparation. I want to see what the, uh, the honey lemon are like. I haven't done anything of these. I thought about doing a honey drizzle. Or even making, you know, just maybe a, bowl, uh, a little bit of ghee with some fresh garlic in there, a little bit of honey, and doing a quick baste. But again, this is just to test the rub and see what it what it brings to the party. Again, from process perspective, super juicy. Definitely a garlic forward flavor. I do have some honey powder. I'm gonna actually add a bit to it. There's no real sweetness to it in my opinion. It needs some black pepper, I think. It's not bad. I think as a base for something and then adding a few other spices, including a little bit of salt, a little black pepper, it'd be perfect. But then again, tossed in a honey garlic glaze or sauce, that would be very good. There's almost a, in the background, there's almost a mustard flavor too. Interesting. I don't think mustard was on the label of ingredients. So let's see what happens when I put a little bit of crystal on the honey garlic. And again, for anybody out there who's a, a hot sauce fan, you're going to say, well, of course, anything tastes better 
with hot sauce. I can't disagree with you, but let's see what happens. Ooh. Oh, that's nice. With the hot sauce, I actually like the honey garlic better than I do the Frank's Red Hot. Wow. It really, it opens up the flavors. That's nice. Um, will I buy it again? Based on the hot sauce? Yeah. I'm a, I'm a fan of garlic anyway. It's not hot, even with the hot sauce. And this is, a, you know, Crystal is a mild hot sauce if you've never used it. Um, you know, again, it, it's a vinegar forward and cayenne sauce. I don't think it's one that's meant to heat you up. They do have a garlic crystal that might even be better on that. I just don't have any in my pantry right now. Overall, you can probably make better yourself if it's part of a larger rub. Again, adding a little bit of salt, a little black pepper to the original blend and maybe adding either some sweetness to it or adding, again, a garlic glaze. Even some lemon juice mixed with lemon pepper, that would be amazing. Overall, it's good. It needs more heat. I don't, I don't think that's uh, for anybody except with the most mild of palates. That, to me, would be a mild wing in any wing joint. That's not even, there's not even a burn in your mouth. It's just a nice tingle on your lips. That's about it. Nothing in the back of your palate. I consider a success. They're great. I wouldn't consider it my go-to by any means. I think that the Owens products for their hot wing, their buffalo wing powder is much better in terms of heat, in terms of depth of flavor. But... With just a few drops of hot sauce, it transforms it to the point where you don't need to just do a full glaze. You can do it wing by wing. For people who don't like to get their hands messy or who don't like an overly sauced wing, and I fall in the category of, of liking minimalist when it comes to tossing wings in a sauce, good. Not great, good. But that's an easy tutorial on how to do a quick smoked wing that will give you a nice crispy exterior. Again, 45 minutes at 175 to get some good smoke on them. Another 45 minutes, nearly 50 minutes at 350. Um, I'm still going to have to you know, jimmy around inside a bit in terms of rotating the wings to make sure that none get too crispy on that back row if I keep using the direct sear kit as my default setting. If I go back to the old, uh, the old drip pan for this type of prep, it's not a problem whatsoever on the blazing gridiron. I'm happy. And honestly, for a nice little Sunday meal with friends, this is not too damn shabby. So hope you guys are having a great weekend as well. And we'll pick back up with another video in the near future.